This is an interview with Michael Thomas, longtime Subud member, helper, had various jobs in Subud, and lives in Canada. So, Michael, can you start by telling us how you found and came into Subud? Yeah, I came into Subud in Canada. My home is in the UK. It was through friends, I think. So, where were you opened? In Coombe Springs. Do you remember the year? I could guess at it. I'd say 1955 or something like that. Wow. Do you, do you remember your opening? Yes, very clearly. What did you experience when you were opened in Subud? Well, when I got used to the privilege of being John Bennett's library, which is a beautiful place to be, we stood up and then the helpers began to go through the whatever the rigmarole is that they had then. <clears throat> and then I, I felt the existence of the Larihan <clears throat> and something very strange happened. I got a, a strong push in the back. I wasn't used to being pushed at all or being pushed in the back. So I whipped around in order to challenge the pusher and of course there was nobody there. <laughs> yeah. That was very odd for me. I wasn't being used to pushed around by ghosts or whatever they were. So I realized it was a benign attempt to get my attention. So I thanked whoever it was and assumed that that was part of the opening. And did you meet Bapak at that time? Was he there? Yes, we met Bapak by that time. Yes. <clears throat> Bapak was really on tour at the time. Yeah, so he, he was staying with Bennett in Coombe Springs. Yeah. Yeah. He was around. He wasn't in my opening, but he was around, you know, at that time. Uh -huh. Did you have any interactions with Baba then? Not at the time of the opening, no. Oh. So over the years, have you had any experiences with Bapak that kind of stand out in your memory? No, I didn't have any really remarkable experiences that would be worth retelling. But he was always a comfortable presence, you know. So how about any other kinds of experiences in Subu that you had that, that you can recall? Well, experiences with other Subud members, very frequent. I mean, I, <clears throat> even now, we have like four lally hands a week. So you meet the brothers and sisters each time you go. So you're going to lally hand four times a week? Yeah, we have a uh, helpers lally hand on Monday, regular group lally hand on Tuesday and Thursday. And then Sunday again, it was a regular lot of hands. Then we have a helpers meeting. Sounds like you have a very active group there, huh? Well, it should, it should be more, and it was more active. We've had a lot of absentees lately after COVID and generally bad weather. But the lot of hand goes on. You know. Has your lot of hand changed over the years? Oh, yes. Got a lot quieter. Is it stronger or deeper or about the same as before? I'm hoping so, yes. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think we have a good depth gauge in Subud. Don't have a what? We don't have a good depth gauge. If you say, is your laddie hand deeper? Yeah. So how would you judge... Being in Subaru, does, how, how does that affected your life? Uh, well, it's made life much easier in some ways. Like uh, my marriage, for example, was greatly helped by being in Subaru. Because my wife was in it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's kept me in good, better health than I would have been in without it. Certainly a calmer mind. 
Palmer Mind. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's probably true with me too. Yeah. So what group do you, you belong to? Uh, the Seattle group. Oh. Seattle, Washington. Yeah, I visited there once. <clears throat> I was very charmed by it. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. place. Yeah. Do you have any other experiences that kind of stand out in your life that that you remember and are kind of substantial to your life and living? Yes. But somebody is like a constant presence, you know. It doesn't, uh, doesn't just come as a highlight, as a sensational thing, and then disappear for a while. It's there all the time, <clears throat> generally in the background. When good things happen, I'm grateful. And when not so good things happen, I'm also grateful. Because I realized that it would be better, it would be worse if, uh, if Subud, if the Ladiha were not present. I assume you've had various jobs in Subud. Do you yes. Yeah. Can you say something about doing those that kind of work and how it affected your life? Yes. I've done practically everything there was to do. In Subud, there was chair, national chair, regional chair, local chair, that kind of job. I was helper, national helper, regional helper, group helper. So <clears throat> I've done the rounds of the jobs. And it was very pleasant. Pleasant meeting people in Subud. Because I think they're an exceptional bunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I worked as a teacher, you know, and so many difficult situations arise, these days anyway, for teachers. And so you're grateful that the Ladian's there to calm you and arrange for things to happen in such a way it isn't too difficult to deal with. I'm sure we all share those experiences. So, so how, would, how would you rate your Subud experience after all these years? Oh, I rate it really high. Yeah, nothing sensational, you know. It's just, <clears throat> it's just like uh, the background noise to the universe. Except that it's not a noise. It's like a quiet purring. That sounds good. <laughs> well, I'm grateful for that. So how old are you now? 91. And you've been in Subud for how long? Do you, can you figure that out? It's a long stretch. But it hasn't been a difficult stretch. It's been a very rewarding, for me anyway. Yeah. Because I think I'm an excitable type. So I need a Larihan that's calming, you know, it's reassuring. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And I've been given that, thank God. Yeah, we all have been given that gift. Do you have any advice for people who might be listening to this? Yes, I would, yes. If you're lucky enough to get into Subut, then value the experience. You know, don't miss anything. If there's a meeting, go to it. You know, if, there, if there's some service that you can offer, offer it. Yeah, Subut is really a different quality, a different class of education for me. I was in education for nearly all my life, you know. But the super experience was easily the most important for me. You still have that beautiful Seattle house? We do, yes. And yeah. Even had it repainted not too long ago, so it looks I even could. more beautiful. Yeah, yeah it is. <clears throat> it's a lovely spot. So what group are you in? It's called Montreal. 
Montreal, Canada. That's right. Yeah. Do you have many people in your group? Not now, because we've been hit by COVID and a Canadian winter at the same time. So we're down to about three men who are always at Lattihan. And sometimes we can get up to 10 men in the Lattihan. I think the women are about the same numbers. So I don't have any more questions, but do you do you have anything other th other things you'd like to say? I'm sure there are a million things as soon as we shut the computer. <coughs> it all come crowding back, you know. Yeah. Any experiences that stand out in your life? That yes, joining Subud, being opened in Subud. They were real highlights for me. And the meetings that we had, we had fantastic uh, meeting in Jakarta, the last international congress in Indonesia before this one coming up. Are you talking about the 1971 congress? Yes. Yes. That was a special one. Yeah. A wonderful experience. Yes. What do you recall about that congress? I thought the length of the Congress was amazing. It seemed to go on forever. And the way in which every minute of the day was packed with something, if not very important, very interesting to experience. Papak was there all the time. The accommodation was a surprisingly adequate. Ah. There aren't many experiences that people <clears throat> enjoy that are more important than a super Congress, you know. Yeah. That's when that 70, 71 Congress was remarkable for many things. Were you staying in the bamboo houses at that yes. time? Yes. Yes. Were you with your wife at the time or by yourself? I wasn't by myself, nor with my wife. <clears throat> I was with a fellow Montreal member called Raymond Grad, a very good Subud member. <clears throat> so we went together, came back together, and his being with me saved me a lot of trouble and money. <clears throat> we chartered a plane, you know, for that 71 Congress. Yeah. Yeah. How come? It was, there was a wonderful travel agent in New York who arranged all that. I was hoping somebody would do the same this time. There's a lot of work for her. Yeah. That was the, the biggest plane that had landed in Indonesia at that time. Yeah. That's why there were so many soldiers on the roof. <clears throat> As you came into the airport, you could see very little except soldiers with rifles standing on the roof of the building. Wow. Yeah. I didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see it? I'm no, amazed. I was... If you were there, yeah. you couldn't have missed it. <clears throat> Unless you closed your eyes when you came out of the plane. Because everyone was looking up to see if there was going to be any shooting action. No, but we were we were really blessed. I remember that someone had arranged for us to go right through without going through customs. <clears throat> yes, not only customs, but through this that mad city of Jakarta. Yeah. Side streets had been blocked off. So we went unimpeded right through to our destination. I was told that was because there was an admiral was uh, on the Subwood Planning Committee. Yeah. Yeah. And he had pulled his weight. And the troops kept everybody quiet off the streets. Anything more you can recall about that Congress? Yes. Leaving it was very remarkable. 
Leaving it, did you say? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Why was that remarkable? Well, because we had to bring things home to please people since we've been away such a long time. <clears throat> so my friend Grad went to the bird market and he bought two cockatoos, four feet high, in bamboo cages. Huh. And the cockatoos were not happy. Oh, However, <laughs> not happy, imagine. they make a frightful noise. So the girls at the airport said, no, no, you can't take those birds on. But there was a pilot going by and they called him over and he happened to be our pilot. And the girls said, no, we can't do this. this man wants to take these birds on board with him. So the pilot said, stick them in the billy. I didn't know what the billy was at the time, but now I think I know what it is. <laughs> it's where you put somebody or something that you can't put anywhere else, you know. Yeah. Storage area or something. Or... Yeah. So he came home and a grad who was a, a biologist, knew a lot about animals and their care <clears throat> and the value. Two magnificent cockatoos. So I think he sold them for about $400 each, ah. which paid our fares. Turns out uh, it was an economical b bonus, huh? Oh, yeah. Anybody can do it, you know. <clears throat> you just have to go to the bird market before you come home. Huh. And there's quite a demand everywhere for these rare tropical birds. Yeah. So tell me what's going on interesting in Seattle. Say that again. Tell me what is happening of interest in Seattle, super wise, I mean. Uh, we have a fairly good group. Uh, Usually there's a dozen or more men at yeah. Lottie Hunt. And, uh, yes, very nice group, I remember. <clears throat> fairly stable, I guess. Yeah. Good people. Yeah. So what, what other congresses did you go to that you can recall? Well, I've been to almost every international congress. Uh, that Indonesian Congress stood out because it was long and packed. I mean, there were so many interesting things that were arranged for us at that time. Never a dull moment. And the nights, the evenings, Bapak was always out, you know, with the Wayang. I don't know if whatever happens, we, I don't think it'll be anywhere near as good as that. This time, first of all, because Bapak isn't there. Other people are not going to take the same care as he did with the program or everything else. So do you have children? Yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. I had five. Now I have four. Five? Yeah, one died, yes. How, about, how many grandkids do you have? I have about ten. Ten, wow. Well, I have five. Wow. You should tell your kids to work harder. Oh, uh, they, they work pretty hard. Yeah? Yeah. Do you get to travel across the continent? Do you ever come to Montreal? Uh, no, I don't think I have ever been except for maybe that one time years ago. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was Montreal or Toronto. Oh, wow. Very different cities. Yeah. And I think it was Toronto. Did you live in Toronto at one, one time? I never lived in it, but I visited it very often. Huh. Yeah. It's like a twin sister city to Montreal, you know, certainly the two biggest cities in the East. Well, I don't have any more questions and, uh, I'll leave it to you if you have anything more you want to say. Yeah. So how many people are going to the next Subud Congress in Kalimantan from, from where you are, from Seattle? Not too many. Uh, there may be a few, but I'm not sure how many from uh, our... We'll certainly see more of you. 
But he will go, I'm sure. Well, this is the first time I'm not going to go. Oh. I, I've been to every Congress since 1967. Yeah. But this one I tested and received not to go to it, so. Okay. I will miss you. Yeah. It seems every time I look around, there are fewer of us, you know? Yeah. At the beginning, there were always more of us. That's right. There are fewer of us. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say good night, unless you yeah. have something more you want to say. It's up to you. I have to say good evening to you. It's not quite night here yet. It's still light in the sky. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm sure we'll meet up somewhere sometime. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, sure. So thank you for doing this interview. My pleasure. And uh, it's going to go to the Subud archives. And do you have any objections to me putting it on uh, YouTube for other people to see? No, not at all. Okay. No. Subud archives is a wonderful institution. Yeah. I was there earlier this year, and I met the, the daughter of my old friend, the Popes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She's very active in archives. Okay. Her name is Rashida. Rashida Pope. Rashida. Rashida, yes. Rashida Pope. Okay. Yeah. You certainly see her around if you go to another super international congress. He's very diligent. Well, Michael, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. So yeah. thank you for doing it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your being willing to tell your story. Yes. Well, lots that I didn't tell you, you know. Perhaps one quiet evening, when I'm sure you don't have your recording machine with you, I'll it's, tell you something. It's still recording. Go ahead. No. <laughs> yeah. Some things, you know, we shouldn't uh, shouldn't talk too much about. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay.